Hey Zen fam, so the Xbox Series S has a problem, doesn't it? After all, we've seen a developer from Rocksteady Games come out and call it a potato in relative terms. And this raises some interesting points for debate. You see, the thing is that the Xbox Series S was designed to fulfill a particular part of the market. It was built as a budget system in the ninth generation of consoles. PlayStation 5, your Xbox Series X, and your Xbox Series S in the middle. Fine, dandy, brilliant, save some money. But then problems began to appear right at the very beginning. You see, with the Xbox Series S, because it's got half the processing power, it's also got half the memory, thus it being half the price, roughly speaking, in all regards. But here's the kicker. If you want to get the memory of the Xbox Series S to the same standard by the, as the Xbox Series X by buying one of those memory modules, then <laughs> you've ended up spending as much money as you would have done if you'd just gone and bought an X. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so you would have been better buying an X anyway and then afterwards saving some money up after that to then get the memory module and then have way more space. But a lot of people don't have that kind of forethought and planning. A lot of people go, right, I'll do this thing, that thing, that thing, and then that'll be there. And then they see the mistake they've made six months later and go, oh, happens to everybody. You're only human. But here's the thing, all right? It has a, as it runs as a budget system, yes, the Xbox Series S is more powerful than a PlayStation 4 Pro, and it's more powerful than an Xbox One X. Seriously, Microsoft, you need to sort out that naming convention. You're as bad as Sony are for naming their phones and their headphones. Don't start me on Sony naming conventions of, te of technology outside of PlayStation. God. Anyway, so, being more powerful than the console refresh upgrades of the, ninth, of the eighth generation is great. It's fine. It's awesome. However, since it's not up to the standard of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, which are fairly similar, you know, it's you know, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know, that's how close they are. There's there's little dips and troughs between each one. One does this thing better, the other one does that thing better, the other one does this thing worse, the other one does that thing worse, and back and forth. You know, but roughly speaking, the Xbox, the Xbox S, sorry, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are pretty much as good as each other. You know, with some slight differences back and forth, controller, blah, 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 you know, sound technology, VR capability, you know, uh, read and write speeds. You know, it's it's all there. It's all technical jargon. You can sit there with like spec sheets for both of them and go all, as much as you like. You know, fanboys are going to fanboy is what I'm saying here. OK, and as I said in the previous video, fanboys, the companies don't care about you get a rest. Anyway, so with the Xbox Series S being underpowered as a ninth generation console, this presents a problem that the developer himself spoke about. You know, when uh, the guy who, one of the team behind Gotham Knights, where basically, because it's underpow underpowered in comparison to the two headline consoles of the ninth generation that means if you have a multi-platform game that's meant to be playable across all the series all the series consoles and the playstation 5 then because the series s is so much less powerful than the big two then it's going to hold back on the capabilities of that game and as games become more and more complex and become, you know, with greater levels of technical whiz-bangery, 
you know, ray tracing, 3D audio, greater textures, AI components, dynamic patterns of weather and whatnot. You, na you name any kind of cool stuff that can be done in games in the ninth generation, then these games are going to get held back because the Xbox Series S can he handle it? You know, nothing on the Xbox Series S. It's a great little system if you want to save some money. But, if you're wanting to get the best from the ninth generation multi-plat situation, it's going to increasingly prove to be more and more and more of a bottleneck. You know? And that's just an unfortunate truth of the matter. So, what does Microsoft do about the Series S? You know? I mean, it can't scrap it. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there and people have spent their money. And people, a lot of people like the Series S because it saves them money. Do they turn it into a streaming box? But then if you turn it into a streaming box, people go, but I don't want a streaming box. I bought a system with a disk drive because I live in a rubbishy internet area. And a lot of places do have rubbishy internet. I mean, look at large chunks of North America, and South America, and I believe also parts of Australia, and many other places in the world. There are lots of pockets on this unhappy planet that have really, really horrible internet. And thus, you need a disk-based system. I mean, I've got brilliant internet here, you know. My city's got great, really good internet, and, uh, Admittedly, a lot of the UK is getting better and better and better with internet as the government have decreed that in the next two years, or well, at least over the next two years, that all the copper cable is getting yeeted and everywhere is going to have a replacement with glass fibre internet, which is lovely and speedy and woohoo! However, that's not every place. There's a lot of places still in copper networks. And with those people in copper networks, that kind of streaming future right now doesn't make any sense. It's just not practical. So you end up with a problem of buy an Xbox Series S, save a bit of money. If it becomes a streaming box, you're SOL. <laughs> it's, like, it's just that simple. You are out the game, sonny. Because you can't have the games, because you can buy them, but uh, they'll not run in your machine if Microsoft takes that route. Because they can't keep having games on Xbox Series X look not as good as they could look. Otherwise, people will just go, well, why did I buy an Xbox Series X? But to a some extent, people might even start going, well, why did I bother buying a PlayStation 5? The games aren't looking that much better. This is a debate we've had for years, it's like, what's the next generation really going to be like? What's going to make it different? And at this generation, what's supposed to make it different is about immersion and ease of use. Our games are supposed to get to us now to a point where we look and go, wow. But not just wow at the graphics, but wow at how the worlds we interact with on our screens feel, you know? The AI components and all the other sort of stuff, I said the immersive elements, the immersion of games is what's supposed to be happening. And the more that they're held back by a half-powered system masquerading as a ninth-gen system, the more this problem is going to be exasperated. And that's not good. But obviously I'd like your opinions in the, t in the comments so typey, typey, typey down below, let the bloke know what you think. I think there's a lot of problems coming and Microsoft's going to end up with some serious egg on its face because of the Xbox Series S. X is fine, S is a problem. Anyway, hashtag support Scottish YouTubers and of course, as always, I, nay bother. <laughs>